Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadi and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, I am going to teach you how to optimize After Effects to work better than it may currently be working on your computer. And I'm not just talking about performance. I'm also going to be talking about setting up your workspace so that it works good for you, setting up your render presets so that it works good for you. We're going to be taking a look at a lot of different things, digging through the menus, and I'm going to give you my opinion on how you can optimize your setup, no matter what kind of PC you have, so that After Effects works better. That is a money back guarantee. I will pay you back if After Effects doesn't work better after you watch this entire video. Send me an invoice. All right, now before you ask, these are my computer specs, okay? Yes, I have a pretty decent setup, all right? That, that doesn't matter. What matters is the information contained in this video so that you can make your setup, whatever that is, run a little bit smoother. So without further ado, open up Adobe After Effects. I will do the same because we are getting started right now. All right, I've got After Effects open, and for those of you that are curious, I'm using version 17.5, but the information contained in this video will work for slightly later and slightly earlier versions from the time that I post this video, so don't worry about that. The first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is setting up your workspace to work best for you. Now, don't pay attention to this. This is called Flow, it's from AE Scripts. It's just an always up graph editor, so I don't have to go into my graph editor every time, and it allows you to save presets. I don't get endorsed for this, but it's 30 bucks on aescripts.com if you wanna buy it go for it. I'm not going to talk about it in this video. What I am going to talk about is my workspace. You can see up here at the top of After Effects, I have my Not Ian Sands workspace set up. And this is all the stuff that I use on a regular basis. And mine is mainly based off of, if you go to Window Workspace, all panels. And I have a couple different things in here, right? Gift Gun, which is something else that I purchased for making gifts. My Red Giant Universe dashboard, which is kind of like always up over here so I can quickly grab Red Giant Universe effects. But what you're going to want to do is set up your workspace to work better for you. Notice the tabs and everything that you're using over here on the right hand side and just get rid of stuff that doesn't work for you. You can just right click over here and go to close panel and you can move all of this stuff around, right? So I could take flow and I could put it over here just by dragging and dropping. Again, coming over here and putting it on the left hand side, shrinking it down just like this. And whenever you're ready, you can come up to your active template and click on these three little lines and then go to save as new workspace. And then you can save that out as your own personalized workspace. Since I moved some stuff around, right? Like I'll go over here, throw this over here throw this over here and I've really messed up my workspace. It's okay, don't worry. You can come up to these three little lines and go to reset to saved layout and it will reset it all back to where it was when you started. So definitely customize your own workspace because that is gonna help you optimize your workflow in After Effects. That's just like a quality of life thing. That's not a technical specification thing, but it really does help if you make sure that your workspace is conducive to the work that you are doing. Okay, let's move on to the menus and everything kind of buried in the program. Nitty gritty, I'm gonna show you what I use and my opinions on some stuff. So first we're gonna start off by coming up to edit, preferences, and we are going to start at the top with general. Now here are the settings that I use. I will leave them up on screen just for a minute so you can make sure that yours looks like mine. Uh, most of these are set to default. I think one of the most important ones that I don't know if it's checked by default is center anchor point in new shape layers. So basically anytime you make a new shape layer in After Effects, it will automatically center the anchor point in that shape layer. That's just a little time saving one, but check out these options. Uh, not really much for me to comment on here. Uh, this is pretty general as the menu states is general, but we are going to move on next to previews. Now this one is pretty important. We're going to start with fast previews and you should set your adaptive resolution limit as low as it will possibly go so that you can preview large projects faster. We will cover the adaptive resolution and fast previews in a little bit outside of this menu, but then you can click on GPU information. And if you have a GPU in your computer, it will tell you exactly what you're rocking right here. Mine is the RTX 2080 Ti. I am sorry to those of you that don't have this graphics card. I wish I had a 3090 but I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> I wish I had a 3090, but I don't. Okay, anyway, we're jumping back in. So it will tell you if you have a graphics card. If you don't, it will likely say somewhere in here that you are using your CPU to do your rendering and the fast draft texture memory. I've actually looked online and I can't find any like good information on this. So whatever your default is set to, I would just leave it at that, okay? We're gonna click on okay. And under viewer quality, I have my zoom quality set to more accurate. Sometimes when you zoom in on layers in After Effects, if your project is really big, the layers will be super pixelated. And that used to make me so angry. So if you set it to more accurate, it will actually retain more of the detail in those layers when you zoom in. And I'm going to show you later in this video how to like combo that with your fast previews to give you like the most accurate and high quality renders with the lowest amount of time. But 
if you want to just copy me and you want to be like your old pal, Naughty and Sans from Learn How to Edit Stuff, set it to more accurate and color management quality, more accurate except cache preview. Composition switches automatically enable frame blending and motion blur rendering. That is when you turn on motion blur on a layer in After Effects, it will automatically enable it in the composition. So this is a nice little time saving one. And audio, mute audio when preview is not real time. For those of you that have been working with audio in After Effects, when you try to play something, it hits the cache point and then the audio slows down and it sounds like monster, like really slowed down audio. That really upsets me, <laughs> like on a cellular level, I hate it when that happens. So if you have this checked, it will mute audio when the preview is not in real time. That's just a nice one for your sanity. Going on to display now. Nothing really to talk about here. The bottom two are kind of the most important. Hardware, accelerate, composition, layer, and footage panels, and show both timecode and frames in timeline panel. Import. One of the most important ones in here is checking this checkbox for H.264 hardware accelerated decoding, which requires a restart. So if you don't have this checked, you'll have to restart After Effects. I would recommend restarting your computer just to be safe. You never know in order for that to take effect. And we are on on output now, very nice. Uh, nothing I have changed in output, uh, so just use default file name and folder. Cool, nothing really exciting going on in the output, but now on to grids and guides. My recommendation for your grids and your guides, especially when it comes to color, is making sure that it's a color that stands out. You don't wanna use something like a gray or a black or a white because it's gonna get lost in the shuffle and then your grids and guides kind of are pointless, right? But your grids will work for your proportional grid and your normal grid, and you can also set the style. I like to keep mine on lines because it's a lot easier to see, just hard lines right on your composition. But check this out. Right now it's set to grid line every 80 pixels with four subdivisions. So what that means, I'm gonna exit out of this menu, is if you come down here to this little like target and you turn on your grid, this is what it looks like. And it is very chaotic, right? So grid every 80 pixels. And these are the four subdivisions that it's talking about. So inside one of these big squares, there's four more vertical and horizontal squares. And this is like really nauseating to look at. I am not a huge fan of this. So if we come back over into our preferences and go to grids and guides, what I would recommend doing at the very least is turning your subdivisions down from four to two. And when you do that, everything becomes a little bit nicer to look at, but I don't even use this grid uh, most of the time. What I use is the proportional grid, which will set up a grid based on your composition dimensions. So I'm gonna turn off this grid and I'm going to turn on proportional grid, which will give me nice proportions. All the squares are even across the board and this is set up based on your dimensions. So depending on which one you wanna use is up to you. I like proportional grid and as for your guides, if you hit Control R on your keyboard, it will bring up the ruler, and then you can come over here to the left-hand side or the top, and you can pull down guidelines, which will give you access to kind of put your own lines into your composition so you can frame stuff up. And again, based on our menu items, these are red and my guides are green. And if you want to show and hide all your guides, it is Control semicolon, which will turn them on and off. And then you can also hit Control R again to get rid of your rulers, but that is how you make your own guides. And if I bring in another one, it'll bring them all up here from my previous version. And then to get rid of them, you just drag them correspondingly up or over to the side to get rid of them. So different ways to use grids and guides, but definitely make them a color that stands out so you can use it appropriately. And if you're not using grids and guides, Welcome to the future. Labels, nothing really going on here. I think these are all the exact defaults, but if you want, you can change all of these colors and you can label them all yourselves. If you're super, super OCD about your labeling and After Effects, uh, this tab is gonna be the right one for you type A people. Media and disk cache. Okay, very, very important. Now I understand that not all of you will be able to do this, but what I recommend and what Adobe recommends is using a hard drive on your computer specifically for your cache drive. And it should be a solid state drive, something that's very fast. So if we go back into the menu, I have my maximum disk size set to 500 gigs, and I have an internal SSD inside of my computer just for my After Effects cache. This is gonna make sure that it doesn't go onto your C drive. It's not bogging down something else on your computer, taking memory and hard drive space away from other applications. If you can, if you can afford it, definitely get an internal drive for your computer that is a solid state or very fast drive that you can set as your After Effects cache drive. I can't stress the importance of this enough. It is very important and and it will just speed up your workflow entirely if you can do it. And if you guys are having speed issues inside of After Effects, you might need to empty your disk cache. So regardless of what this folder is, you can come in here and click on empty disk cache. 
and it will delete all of the files that are on your computer. And this will speed up After Effects if you're running into any caching issues. So I have 208 gigs of disk cache on my computer, but that's okay because I have the drive for it. And I'm going to clear disk cache for all versions of After Effects, click okay, and it will free up some hard drive space as well. Bazinga, I'm also going to clean my database and cache. And apparently it's gonna take about a minute, so fast forward through this part. Okay, so now I have cleaned my database and cache, and now I have a little bit more hard drive space, and After Effects, in theory, should run a little bit smoother now that we've done this. And the last two in here are write XMP IDs to files on import. I do this because it makes sharing between programs and sharing between editors a little bit more smooth. And I think create layer markers from footage XMP metadata is already checked for you, so you can just leave that on. Video preview. I don't have Mercury Transmit enabled because I don't want my output of my composition to be going to any of my monitors. So if this is enabled, you can disable that, which will, I think, save a little bit of power for your computer. Appearance. Uh, this is where you can make After Effects brighter if you want. If you're a psychopath, this looks disgusting. Dark mode always. Uh, I have cycle mask colors unchecked. I think it is checked by default. And that's when you're making multiple masks on a layer. It will cycle through all the different colors. And sometimes I find that After Effects will make a mask color very similar to the color that I'm trying to mask out and so it gets really confusing so I just have that unchecked and you can you know customize the look and feel of After Effects here if you want to. New project uh, you can load up a project template if you'd like I'm not really going to go into that I don't have that it's just the After Effects default. Auto save very important I save every six minutes for a maximum project versions of 200. How many times have you been working in After Effects and then you crash and you lose like 15 20 minutes of work or you have your maximum project version set really low and then you hit your cap and then your autosave kind of stops and then you lose work don't lose work all right after effects project files are not very big in file size so set that max project version really really high and set your autosave duration really low and always autosave next to project always always way easier to find memory you're going to want to lower this number down as low as it will possibly go on your computer you have to reserve ram for other applications unfortunately i wish i could give all of my ram to after effects but lower this down as much as it will possibly go and that will help speed up your workflow a little bit you could also check this checkbox reduce cache size when system is low on memory that will help you at some point but you can always purge or delete your media cache as well Audio hardware, this is just the audio that's coming out of your computer, so I have mine set to default. Audio output mapping, again, set to default. Sync settings, I think everything is set to default, uh, but this will basically allow you to sync your preferences into Creative Cloud and then download them on another computer. And when you are syncing, uh, I'm gonna click okay, you can come right up here to this little button that is your sync settings, and it will allow you to sync your settings with your After Effects account. Uh, so that's a real easy way to kind of transfer computers if you wanted to. Finishing up here, type, my text engine is set to Latin, all of this is default, scripting and expressions, all of this is set to default, and 3D, all of this is set to default. Click OK, and now ladies and gentlemen, we have gone through the preferences menu. I know it was kind of arduous and boring, but it is important for you to kind of have better performance in After Effects on your rig. Now, a common problem I hear all the time is, Ian, After Effects is running slow. Is there something that I can do to speed up my performance? And the answer is yes, mostly. So let's go through some of those things. You can come up here to edit first and foremost and go to purge, and it will allow you to purge all your memory and disk cache. We did this earlier, but you can purge right from the edit menu and that will help speed things up a little bit. And the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is adaptive resolution. So if you come right down here, follow the mouse, follow the mouse, this little lightning bolt with a little box around it and a down arrow. If you click on that, it will show you what you're looking at as far as fast previews and you can turn on adaptive resolution. And let me open up another project so I can show you exactly what this does. Okay, here's a project that I was working on the other night while I was streaming. This project is just some DJ visuals that I was working on, so a lot is happening. And with adaptive resolution set, which it is on right now, I can kind of scrub through and it will give me a low resolution preview as I'm scrubbing through my timeline, which is really important to kind of see in bigger projects. If you have adaptive resolution turned off, your computer is going to be trying to render full res previews while you're scrubbing, and it's just gonna take forever and you're not gonna be able to do anything or see anything because your computer is just gonna spend a lot of time loading. So with adaptive resolution and also fast draft, it is down resing the quality of your timeline so that you can actually scrub through and see what's going on in a lower quality preview and if I were to let go of the playhead you see that eventually it snaps into full resolution but this will allow you to kind of scrub and see things on your timeline a lot faster than if you were to have the full quality one turned on. 
which leads us very nicely into paused resolution versus playback resolution. And you can tell which is which right down here. Underneath your composition where it says full, this is your paused resolution. So what resolution is this while the video is paused? If I were to change this from full to quarter, you'll see that my text gets pixelated because I am viewing my pause in quarter resolution. And this is not the same as playback resolution. Playback resolution can be found under preview and coming down here to resolution. And you see, I have mine set to quarter. What I would recommend for everyone, and especially in bigger After Effects projects, is to always be previewing in third or quarter resolution and have your paused resolution set to full because that will render the full resolution while you are paused. And this is just a nice way to speed up your playback because it's going to render your playback in quarter res, but it'll allow you to kind of see details in full when it's paused. And last but not least, as far as performance is concerned, follow the arrow all the way down to here, your bits per channel of your composition. If you click on that, I have mine set to 16 bits. I believe the After Effects default is eight bits per channel, but the higher your bit depth, the higher the pixel density for color information will be. Uh, I really tend not to use 32 bits. I usually stay on 16, but according to the After Effects website, your bit depth, while working in a higher bit depth, it provides a higher precision for calculations and greatly reduces quantization artifacts, such as banding in gradients. If you've ever applied a gradient to anything in After Effects and you see there's like bands around the outside, that's probably because your bit depth is too low. Try increasing your bit depth and that will help get rid of some of that banding, the more you know. And the very last thing I wanna talk about is render presets. It's a huge, huge time saver and something you should absolutely be utilizing. I'm gonna hit Control M on my keyboard to bring up my render queue. If I go to my output module, I can click on this little arrow and I can go to where it says make template. Now for me, I use ProRes plus alpha for almost everything. That is a QuickTime codec. It is lossless, it is uncompressed, and it includes an alpha channel, but you can set your movie default to be whatever you want. So let's make a new preset. Let's call this ProRes, no alpha. And I will come down here to edit and I will keep my format at QuickTime and I will do my video output to be RGB only. And under my format options, I'm gonna make sure that Apple ProRes 4444 is selected. Click OK, click OK again. And now I have saved that as a setting and I could automatically set my movie default to be ProRes No Alpha if I want, just by selecting ProRes No Alpha here. Click OK, I'm gonna remove this from my render queue, come back over here, Control M, and now you'll see that ProRes No Alpha is set as my default for every render that I output from After Effects. So this is a nice, convenient way to not have to like guess what you're choosing here and set your own custom preset. If you wanted to use Adobe Media Encoder, you could do that as well, which will allow you to export an H.264 out of After Effects. You can come right up here to File, Export, and go to Add to Adobe Media Encoder queue, and then you'll use Media Encoder to do your export instead of internal After Effects things. Woo, that is a lot of information, folks, but I hope that some of it, or all of it, probably all of it, was useful to you in trying to make After Effects cooperate on the rig that you are currently using. Now, again, everything that I showed you today are the things that work for me and my rig. Again, here are my specifications. They're likely not going to match yours, but that's okay, because the information that we talked about today should help you navigate your own rig and hopefully get some performance back out of After Effects if you're having any issues. And ideally, if you follow at least 50% of the things that I talked about in this video, you should have a more pleasant After Effects experience, hopefully. Drop a comment in the comment section below if anything that I talked about today is new information or has helped you on your After Effects journey. Well, I wanna thank you very much for listening to me ramble on about After Effects for a while. How long is this tutorial? I don't know, I don't keep track. If you're new here to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would very much appreciate that. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for watching this video. There are links in the video description below for you to check out some of my social media. You can join my Discord. You can download some presets that I've made. You can support me in this channel by getting some stuff from Envato and, and Epidemic Sound. It mostly supports you, but it also supports me. Everything's in the link tree in the video description below. Thank you once again for watching this video. My name is Nadi Ian Sands. This is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Go grab a cup of coffee, get into After Effects, and I'll see you in the next one.